Schilling's work is transformative. It inspires rhetoric on the need for social change and the spirit of decolonization. It is a vehicle for social change by creating space for its subjects, first on the canvas and then within a wider conversation about the importance of the representation. But where did the success of Arthur Schilling's art career blossom? What were the odds of an Indigenous man born into a large family who spent a significant amount of time in a residential school becoming such a prominent artistic figure? Arthur Schilling was born in Rama, about 15 minutes out from Aurelia. Schilling had a passion for art since he was a small child and explored this hobby throughout his time at a residential school. Later in life, he received a boost from two owners of a gift shop in Aurelia. They had visited him on the reservation to ask him if they could display his work in their establishment. They would give him food and clothing as he worked on new pieces. He eventually earned a scholarship to study art under the head of the Southampton School of Fine Art, Bert Henderson. His success grew more and more prominent as his career as an artist progressed. The National Film Board of Canada featured his work in the 1970s, proving his art had a greater societal impact and reached an audience larger than the Indigenous community alone. Schilling once said, there are not enough shadows in this world to overcome the colors in my mind. Color has the ability to mitigate darkness and thus there is a potential subversive power in painting, which lies in the fact that it may bring forward images and subjects that were previously unseen, rendering them important and visible. The presence of this ability that he had to use his voice through art still lingers in Aurelia and acts as a reminder of the impact that he has left on the town. We see remnants of using art as a form of expressing a desire for visibility, especially from the Indigenous community on the streets of Aurelia to this day.